you know, in real life research, you want to know what is the best size of the sample that you want to take. Because, you know, in these questions that you are practicing, the question says that, oh, we have a population, and from that population we are taking a sample, and then in that sample we found uh, whatever is the observation. But in real life, there is nobody coming to you that tells you, oh, this is the size of the sample. You are the researcher, you are the quality control manager, you are the market researcher. You have to decide what is the size of the sample. And this size of the sample depends on how much confident you want to be and how much error you accept. So, and there is the formula that tells us uh, uh, how we find the size of the sample based on these parameters. I write it here. So formula is that the size, the suggested size of the sample is Z multiplied by the standard deviation divided by R. That is that everything here would be an estimation and at the end we will round it up um, so the, the book doesn't go to the hassle of using the t-distribution, even though if we are predicting the mean of the population and uh, we don't know the mean and the standard deviation of the population, you know that we have to use the Gossett's help. But because everything is estimation, and I think the book didn't want to make it too complicated, they are using just simply the normal distribution. Uh, so... Uh, let's do one of the questions that are related to this and learn by example. A survey is being planned to determine the amount of time executives watch TV. So we want to know the average time that people, uh, executives, spend watching TV. And a survey indicated that the mean per week is 12. So basically our past information is that somebody has told us that, uh, you know this mean of the population is about mean is about something which actually doesn't matter for us it's about 12 hours and uh, 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 but that previous study has shown that the standard deviation, again, our best estimate for sigma, uh, we don't know exactly, but that survey uh, has shown that it is uh, three hours. So people, the executives watch TV 12 hours per week, and the standard deviation is approximately three hours. Now, if we want to evaluate that, we have to think what would be a good study that we can do to do to evaluate and come up with our own estimate. So the question is, if I wanted to do such a study in such a population, what would be the size of the sample that I will take? Now the question is that, how much I want to be confident? Now if I want to be very confident, then I have to take a very big sample. Okay. So what would be the level of confidence that we want? Okay, let's say we want to be, uh, we want to be 95% confident. So if I want to be, my, my research give me a 95% confidence, then that means that I have to go how many standard deviations far from the mean? For 95% confidence, using the Z table, do you remember? If we want the area of the confidence to be 95, then how much is this side? Uh, 0 0.4750. Exactly. And if that is the case, then how many standard deviations I have to go for from the mean? 1.96 1.96 Therefore our Z is 1.96 
Of course, we don't know sigma, but it is approximately three hours. And now the question is that we ask ourselves, OK, how much error do I accept in my prediction? The more error that I can expect, uh, the, the less sample size I need. The less error I want to have, then the bigger sample size I need. The question says that it is desired to estimate the mean viewing time within a quarter of hour. So basically the question says that the error that we are expecting is a quarter of hour. So it is 0 0.25 of an hour, one over four hours. So amount of error is 0 0.25. And this is the expected uh, size of the sample. Now, whatever we get, notice that as a as we discussed at the end of the previous session, we will round it up because we want to over provide. Uh, so if somebody wants us to be 95% confidence and this N is this whatever, we will round it up, not to the closest. So now tell me what is this N as the result of the calculation? It's 553.1904. Five, Okay, so we will we choose a sample size of 553 or 554? 554. Exactly. So you know, those people who don't pay attention to the fact that we want to at least provide that confidence interval, they may decide to round it. But no, we want to, to guarantee that level of confidence and that level of error, we go a little bit higher than uh, formula so we so we will take a sample of 554 or more than 554 uh, so basically this way uh, if you are the researcher you know that you now you have an estimate from the past what is going on what is the expected error in the population what is the, how much variation is in the population and that is this number and based on that, you will, and the confidence that you want, an error that is acceptable to you, uh, in real life, you choose the size of the sample. Good. Good. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so now, let's do the same thing for a kind of proportion question. The Prime Minister wants to estimate the proportion of the population that support his policies. So basically, there is a question about the proportion of the population. Of course, we have to take a sample from that population to test whatever it is. Okay. And the Prime Minister wants to estimate to be within 0 0.05 of the true proportion. So the error that the Prime Minister expects is, you know, the maximum error is 0 0.04. And the confidence interval that we want to have about what we are talking about is 95%. Is 0.95. And the Prime Minister political advisors estimate that the proportion supporting him is 60%. So they guess that the, or maybe based on the evidence that they have, the best estimate that we have for proportion in the population is 60% of people are supporting. Okay. Now, the question is that we want to conduct our study to see what proportion of the people are supporting the Prime Minister. So the question for us is, what is the size of the sample that I would use in my study to, um, uh, to find out the proportion? And for that, we have a very similar formula, P multiplied by 1 minus P, and then we have Z divided by E. Notice that Z is always in the numerator and error is in the denominator. And now basically we have everything that we wanted to find at N. Uh, the best estimate that we have is 0 0.4 multiplied by 0 0.6. And now uh, uh, in a normal distribution, we want 
to have 95% confidence. Therefore, this area should be 0.95. Therefore, half of it should be 0.475. Therefore, you have to go 1.96 standard deviations above and 1.96 standard deviations below the mean. Uh, therefore, Z is 1.96. And the error is 0 0.04. And the size of the sample that we want is at least 576.24. And what is the size of the sample that we will use in our research? 577. At least 577.